Well, all righty then. Welcome back, everyone. This is Patrick's Crypto News. I am Patrick, and I hope you guys are all doing great out there. I want to get right into the news here because there's a lot of things going on I want to talk about. And this is just kind of cover some of the day's news that happened throughout the day and some of the stuff going on right now. So just getting into it, guys. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is why Bitcoin's coming up to the 20K mark right now and what's going to push it past it. What are the factors that are going to push it past that? And what are some of the other cryptocurrencies, such as Ethereum, that will help impact that? So here's one of the articles I want to share with you guys got that says, uh, Market wrap, Bitcoin lingers around 19,000 4K while Ethereum Bitcoin pairing hits bull mode. So there's a little bullish. There's a little bull mode going on there. They're getting a little bullish. And some of the uh, really important things going on here, it says uh, the price of Bitcoin is trending up in a low volume environment. Meanwhile, some rebalancing from Bitcoin into Ethereum has been occurring. So we know Bitcoin um, at its all time high was at its $1,432 like while Bitcoin hit the all time high earlier this week of 19920 so in the past 24 hours, we've seen Bitcoin go up to the $19,607 range. Um, this is pretty good for, uh, they're saying this is like a bullish trend that's going on right now. The Bitcoin market is trending bullish is what it's saying here. After Wednesday made it clear, traders were taking a breather. So they took a little day off, guys, and that's what the, the price sell-off was when uh, we saw it go down to 18300 and so, you know, kind of just like maybe some of the big institutional and retail investors started selling off some of their Bitcoin and um, some of the other people. And now other people are buying in and they're holding on for that next bump. So a lot of these people that come into Bitcoin right now, guys, they're uh, they're coming in kind of at the all time highs, which makes it not very good of an investment. You're always supposed to buy on the lows. So, um, you know, people that got into like XRP would be a better investment. But some of the things that are pushing this, guys, so you can just know right here, and I'm going to have timestamps on the videos if you guys look, is optimism, a balance that is um, more fundamentally positive news combined with market dynamics will lead the world's crystal uh, cryptocurrency higher. So positive news and market dynamics. Also, um, you know, optimism is helping out just a lot of favorable news, you know, with the corona, the corona pandemic, the dollar is going down. Um, they were saying that basically this, the non-cryptos today, that there's this supply um, and demand imbalance. It's like a huge imbalance that's going on right now. We're seeing institutional buyers pick up large amounts fairly frequently so that others will see that and ask where they are getting the coins from. So they're saying these people are like basic, uh, their other friends are watching them um, see where those coins are coming from. And then they're basically buying them too. Miners need to cover their operating costs. So um, we're going to continue to get going higher in a fairly convincing way. And then here's some other things. Uh, people are saying we wouldn't be surprised if we see a $30,000 Bitcoin by summer. And that's um, from Henrik Kuhleberg, a crypto over-the-counter trader. That's a bullish statement from a hardcore Bitcoiner. Um, I think we'll easily hit the $30,000 range. I mean, I think we could even hit, you know, because a lot of people are saying that Bitcoin is the the store of gold right now, these they're saying it's better than, it's like the new form of digital gold. So yeah, I think it easily could hit over that. I mean, obviously it's not the best thing to do, but um, the Ether, just to buy Bitcoin, because all these other coins, uh, you, you can get a lot more of a gain. But Ethereum Bitcoin Pair, which offers the most cryptocurrency exchanges, has been trending bullishly on daily charts. So those are some of the things right there I wanted to go over on that article. And then let me take you to the next one. And this one is first mover either ether eyed as a value play while Bitcoin pressing past 20k. So it's saying right here, if you look, zoom in for you, that Bitcoin is heading back towards its all-time high price of 19,920. It's going to pass that resistance line, and some of the European slides and point toward um, a lower op point to the um, market, the U.S. stock futures as a lower open after. The coronavirus-related fatalities in the country surged on Wednesday to at least 2,760, the deadliest day since the pandemic has gone. It said gold strengthened a little bit for the ounce. Those into crypto, such as institutional investors, are, are buying into Bitcoin's digital gold. So that's what I was saying, guys. It's like this is the digital gold. They're, they're now realizing that this is the way to go. Also, the arrival of Ethereum 2.0 upgrade on December 1st could mark the network's token. 
And it's saying that basically, I've always thought the digital asset space is huge. That's what this person's saying here. And they're saying it's not just Bitcoin. We're going to have different applications for it. And so the different application would be Ethereum. If you look right here, yeah, see, it says that uh, given Ether is trading roughly 59% below its all-time high, and its all-time high was $1,432, it's tempting to believe there's a bargain to be had, but this Ethereum 2.0 could make Ethereum go up. So um, we got to stay looking at Ethereum, guys. That, that could be one that, you know, doubles in price, triples in price again. And if that happens, that'd be really good. Uh, for institutional buyers, they are buying Bitcoin because it's the digital, the digital gold currency, which is still still really good. And um, it's basically saying that Bitcoin has had been locked in the range from 18000 to 20000 since Tuesday, having nearly doubled in price to 19920 in the past eight weeks. Doubled in price, guys. That means there's been a lot of things happening during this corona, corona pandemic. I mean, how many weeks has the corona pandemic been going on right now? Let's see. How many weeks has corona virus been around? So we can just check right here on Google. Let's see. Let's see if we can get like an accurate November has been documented. Da, 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 the timeline. Let's see if we can get the timeline. Um, updated November 25th. January 9th, who announces Mysterious. So since last since last January, guys, that's like about that's a long that's a lot of weeks away. That's uh almost eleven weeks. And that's crazy. Look at quarantine. It's been around for this long. So we've had a lot of things. All right, and the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is this uh Paul Tudor, who is a huge investor, and he doesn't he doesn't normally talk about Bitcoin and all that, but he actually just made a big bullish statement on Bitcoin, which is very uh, surprising to say the least. Let me see if I can find the video for you guys right here. It's actually really um, entertaining, and what he says about Bitcoin is a it's a kind of a big deal. So let's see if we can pull it up real quick right now. Sorry about this ad. Yeah, let's pull it. All right, here we go, guys. This is Paul Tudor, a huge investor. I know you're not a flag bearer for Bitcoin by any means, but you did have a fascinating thesis. Would love to kind of get an update on that, especially at current levels and how you're thinking about the cryptocurrency in the context of your portfolio. Again, I'm not an expert on Bitcoin by any stretch. It's just with a market cap of five hundred billion, it's it's the wrong market cap in a world where you've got 90 trillion dollars worth of uh, equity market cap um, and god knows how many trillions of fiat currency etc so it's the wrong market cap for instance relative to gold which is eight or nine trillion the, the bitcoin reminds me so much of the internet stocks of 1999 because the internet was in its infancy infancy no one knew how to value it because of the world of possibility that lay ahead. What you can be certain of is that probably 20 years from now, uh, our kids and grandkids, whatever, all of us will be using some type of digital currency. Digital currency will be um, will be used by every sovereign. They may have their own digital currency, whatever. They'll be very, very very commonplace at that point in time cash may be gone uh, and all right there you go he's basically one of the biggest investors right here guys is saying that uh you know with the only 500 billion dollar market cap going on right now in bitcoin we can look right here i mean we're at 358,000 just on that 500 billion in all of cryptocurrency they're saying that gold is 8 or 9 trillion Right, eight or nine trillion. They're saying that uh, some of these other ones that we we've seen a ninety, uh, a ninety, tr a ninety trillion in equity in stocks. So there's a huge, huge gap that we're gonna have right here for Bitcoin and other these other ones that come through. Um, he's saying basically that Bitcoin's undervalued. You know, um, some of these sovereign nations might be using it, which is uh, they might start using it into the future. Look at so it says it expects the digital coin to be substantially higher in twenty years. Some of these sovereign nations might have their own, like China might make their own instead of just Bitcoin. But for now, Bitcoin is the digital gold. So Bitcoin is the digital gold right now. And um, that's that's the main takeaway that I wanted to share with you guys on that article. So uh, moving on to the next one, I, I want to just talk about two more things. 
uh, Spotify right now is looking to add a lead to their Libra project to the Libra project with um, with other crypto efforts. So the world's largest music streaming service that just got a Joe Rogan podcast on, you know, they just took away him from YouTube. And now they, I think for like $100 billion, they're signing all these different podcasters on right now. And they're basically, um, they're basically taking over. They're making a comment section even on, uh, even on there so people can comment just like YouTube. And um, yeah, they're so with podcasts, music streaming, and they made their own video service just for the, the video streaming. So it's pretty, you know, they have a lot of, if they, if they start getting into crypto too, that's pretty insane. So Spotify is looking for an associate director to join its payment strategy and innovation team. And um, basically be responsible for uh, defining the streaming giant's global payment strategy where they will assess payment landscape and lead its day-to-day -day engagement for the Libra Association per this announcement. The candidate will also arrive with new opportunities and innovation in a distributed ledger technology, blockchains, cryptocurrencies, stable coins, central bank digital currencies, and other digital assets per the announcement. Spotify is a member of the 27-strong Demi Association, formerly Libra. That sets big names such as Uber, Coinbase, and Shopify. I mean, this is huge, guys. This is more favorable news. We know that the favorable news is going to push up uh, Bitcoin and all these other prices during, you know, even with the Corona pandemic going on, this fear, uncertainty, doubt. Um, the hiring plans, they are basically, they stretch back as far as 2017 when music uh, streaming giant acquired blockchain startup Media Chain Lab. So they've been doing this for a while, which is pretty cool. Um, the next one is it's this is a Ripple announcement XRP. We know we all love our Ripple. How it went up like two X in the last you know during the spike that we're seeing right now. Ripple could be forced to burn over forty eight billion XRP. And Ripple, the uh, Ripple chief technology officer David Swartz has admitted the company has could be forced by uh, validators to burn forty eight billion tokens, regardless of, regardless if it agrees to this decision or not. Company currently holds half of the total XRP demand, and XRP demand, and has come under fire for selling in the past. So now they're basically saying that they might be forced to sell off some of this um, XRP ledger amendments require an 80% approval rating before the ledger's validators are activated. If they stay above the threshold for two weeks, the validators noted that um, the new amendment without support from this is a new amendment without support from Ripple um, Swartz. Hit out on Stellar Development Funds. This is basically just talking more about it. And uh, they're saying basically Ripple Labs can burn um, half of their XRP supply. Ripple has been the subject of a longstanding criticism for routinely selling tokens. According to a report in 2020 by XRP, the firm sold an average of 160, 100 and 196 million XRP per month since December 2017. As of April, the total 5.5 billion xrp has been sold so that's a lot of it being sold in the second quarter ripple stopped selling xrp and started buying tokens to support its price all right so that's some of the news that's going on right now you guys um i am patrick mcleod and i do these crypto videos so you know if you like it i'm gonna put some sta time stamps on here definitely hit that like button hit that subscribe hit me up on facebook if you want to learn how to get paid in crypto i teach that too so just message me and Let's all make this crypto together and hit all these bull hit all these bull runs at the same time. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.